Welcome to Thoughts on Season 1 of Star Wars Resistance. So, spoilers for everything Star Wars leading up to and including this season. I like, okay, the episodes of this season. There's a couple that I come close to loving. This video will be my riffs and analysis for the season, not a review. I will do a spoiler-free review once I've watched the second season as well. Uh, let's see... Yeah, so... I will be talking about the messages that this season communicates, in part about fascism, since Star Wars was, in part, always about criticizing fascism from, from the very start. So, let's get right into it with the first episode, The Recruit Part 1. Cute joke that the sphere entering the frame with space background turns out to be an astromech. We've seen many Star Wars stories start with a space background and a ship flying into frame, so of course we assume we're getting another one of those. And Poe has to save Kaz, but they do also work together. He offers him joining the resistance movement. Now, let's see... Yeah, that is it for that one. So, the recruit part two. Even the pit droid laughs at the idea of flying the fireball. And Flix and Orca, who sell parts for ships and such, are an openly gay couple, the first in the Star Wars galaxy. Love to see it, and they're great together. Like, they, they supplement each other really well. It's, uh, yeah. <coughs> Kaz is going to pay for the Gorg in exposure. Yeah, he is definitely a rich kid. Let's see. So, so yeah, the, the Gorg bites Kaz right after he says, it's too cute to eat. That was very easy to figure out. And I had also guessed that when he leaned on the fireball, something was going to break. And, yeah, there's a lot of pre predictable jokes this season overall. I did laugh at a lot of them, but, yeah. The race is legitimately exciting. And let's see. And and yeah, um Tora actually is happy that he didn't explode. I thought she was messing with him before the race by being nice to him, but she has nothing to gain by reassuring him afterwards. So yeah, just a nice person. Good yeah, I, I great to see it. And, yeah, we learned that the Red Baron works for Phasma, see Starkiller Base, hyping up the movies. You know, f f some of these early episodes of this season are really just, like, it's only at the very end of an episode that we'll get some, you know, some hint that this has, this is important for the movies. And... That brings us to the third episode, The Triple Dark. And... So, yeah, so the episode sets up the feedback, and the pirate attack is foiled in part by that at the end. Rather than run away from his failure at the start of the episode, Kaz makes it work for him. Good message. No one is amazing at everything, and making our failures work for us is, is good. And because Kaz has been talking so much about spy stuff, he actually ends up sounding like the boy who cried pirate by the you know, yeah. And we see the pirates were indeed working for the First Order, again, at the very, very end of the episode. And that brings us to episode four, Fuel for the Fire. So, yeah, this episode is very obviously about doing homework versus leisure time. I really don't think it was okay to do... I don't know if it's homophobic or transphobic, but one of those joke When Kaz go to Aunt Z's and a very creepy alien says, you can live with me, implying that LGBTQ individuals want to do awful things to unwilling cishet, 
and that character reappears like at least twice more over this season and they keep doing that same joke he is is creepy towards Kaz or they creepy towards Kaz I don't know the exact gender identity and we realize Rucker is just taking advantage of Kaz not gonna lie it bugged me when Kaz tricked Niku into turning around holding up tools to to get away from him I like Niku and yeah we learn Yeager had a family was in the resistance one can imagine he left yeah at, at this point I guess he left the resistance because he lost his family but later we learn otherwise Kaz manages to save Rucker's life but gets no gratitude there really wasn't much payoff to to Rucker after this episode like he shows up in that other episode and thinks that he can get one over on Kaz but doesn't I mean I guess he's still on the Colossus by the end of the season so maybe there'll be some payoff to him in season two but other than that yeah I mean they really might as well have had him be grateful there's anyway and Jaeger tells Kaz to clean engine parts outside so that he can watch the race and the episode ends with him losing more stuff falling into the water and that brings us to episode 5, The High Tower. After the First Order has paid pirates to attack the Colossus, they show up in person, try to get more influence, which is, yeah, classic fascism. Kaz works up the nerve to make the jump, does make the jump, without a lot of scenes building up to it, no one chanting rise. And like early in the sequel trilogy, the Stormtroopers are better shots than the original trilogy ones, though plot armor is still very present. And the episode ends on Captain Doza wanting to learn who Kaz is. Which, you know, ultimately he does learn, so that one wasn't a complete wash. Episode 6, The Children from Tehar. And Niku seeks help from the turtles, who are in engineering to hide from Mario. Oh, pipes. Yeah, that's not going to work out for them. And the kids are refugees. This episode could help encourage empathy for refugees. You know, they're frequently fleeing violence in real life. It's not always genocide, but that is also something that happens. Extremely relevant today. I appreciate it. Ellis, I mean, the First Order have left the platform brings us to episode 7, Signal from Sector 6. The sneaking around the creepy abandoned structure is probably the best thing in these first seven episodes. Not really a fan of the Koikian monkey lizards, especially once two of them are fighting Kaz at the same time. Anyone? And the monster growls. Anyone else? It is kind of sweet that the two droids, like form a friendship or fall in love, something like that, and that Kaz is legitimately glad that Poe's proud of him. No, I didn't. And Sonara is a pirate, for some reason gave Kaz her real name. I don't hate this twist. Did Again, did kind of see it coming. I, you know, yes, I know. The show is for kids. I still... There were plenty of twists in Clone Wars and Rebels. Yeah, I should say, if, if you're new to, to these videos of mine, I absolutely love both of those shows. You know, there's a lot of twists in those that, you know, it wouldn't only be kids who didn't see them coming. I am glad that there's a lot of Star Wars content for kids. And let's see, yeah, you know, it is the fact that Sonara the pirate is, you know, now on the Colossus is an interesting setup for future episodes and they do okay at delivering which brings us to episode 8 Sonara's score I liked hearing some details of Tam's background the aces are away the pirates will play tense pirate attack especially when it comes to Kaz and Yeager get off my lift one punch man and Sonara surprised Tam cared enough to protect her. Turns out the real treasure was not the friends she made along the way. Holy crap. If if that little is gonna but but yeah, you know, pirates, not much 
honor to them. Just a feeling beats believing, and Doza contacts the First Order, agrees to the protection. I, I should say, I do appreciate that there is a little bit of, of, you know, gradually we do see fascism take over. I just think it could be a bigger part of these earlier episodes, instead of only the end of episodes. Episode 9, The Platform Classic. Fairly basic familial conflict between Yeager and his brother Marcus. I'm glad that they didn't draw it out over more than one episode. And I do quite appreciate that Opcross, Marcus' mechanic, is friendly, though communicates in a way that others interpret as hostility. There's a lot of people in the real world who mistake passion for anger when they're dealing with people who communicate differently than they're used to. You know, there's the, the for example, the stereotype, uh, you know, um, African Americans and Middle Eastern Muslims can sometimes you know, yeah, be very passionate in, in expressing positive things and some white people who aren't familiar with this, you know, may think, oh, they're they're angry because they're so used to repressing their displays of, of passion. I guess every single time Hyperfuel comes up on this show, it's going to be a cautionary tale about being responsible, not taking dangerous risks. Two for two so far. And despite their issues, Yeager does listen and let Marcus win, and the relationship is strengthened. And that brings us to episode 10, Secrets and Holograms. Tora is playing an iToy flight simulator, and the music is 8-bit, very cute. Very realistic teen daughter father conflict. The First Order are worse than any pirates. Yeah. Tora just wants a break from being in the tower. Kaz wants information in the First Order. So we have a, you know, he actually wants to get into the tower and she's like fine with leaving it. So that was, yeah. Not a, not a terrible setup. You know, you'll want some kind of conflict in in stories so yeah we're halfway through season one about time to get plot developments outside of the very tail end of episodes that is relevant to the sequel trilogy and Kaz realizes Doza is former Imperial and they end up in the incinerator on the wrong date I don't mind that she got the date wrong there's been plenty of strong character moments for you know she she doesn't like if this was the very for if this was the introduction to her, I I would have a problem with it. But like she's in you know we meet her. She's a good pilot. She, yeah, she's an amazing pilot. She's really really nice despite having a lot of privilege. Which you know it's important to encourage people with privilege to be kind to others. You know the the yeah she she's a. Yeah, um, she's a good role model, you know. It's it's good to encourage young women to, you know, follow their passion, even if it is a something traditionally thought of as masculine. And, you know, obviously, being kind, though, you know, that's already something young women are encouraged to. But, yeah, these, these things are, are good. My, my issue here is, it doesn't feel organic, like... Is she supposed to be bad at details? That was not the sense I got from the various episodes she's been in. You know, like... Yeah, it just... It, it felt kind of... Yeah. And because Zora has lived such a sheltered life, she enjoys the danger. Who are you really, Kaz? Like father, like daughter. How many episodes are going to end like this? But again, you know, both of them do by the end of the season know who he is, so not a complete waste of time. Episode 11, Station Theta Black. Oh no, it's going to explode on you. It is not going to explode on you. It's going to explode around you. Do not engage the enemy. Get to know them first. You are moving too fast. I didn't mind the tension and action of this episode, but it does feel like they're going ridiculously slow. Like, 
they were mining to make weapons for their attacks. You know, the attacks began in episode 7, which came out in 2015, three years before this episode aired. You know, you'd think they would be building up stuff for the rise of Skywalker instead, like talking about the massive fleet that was being built, for example. But, yeah. Episode 12, Bebo. Nico loves Bebo. Always nice to see him happy. And and great that he so frequently is happy. If Bebo goes, so do I. Sweet! Two for one deal! Confession recorded. Whoops. And Kaz is flying with the aces. Good for him. And them fighting the kaiju is one of the rare exciting parts of the show so far. Of course, it's obvious. Thank you. You see who that is? It's your mum. Ridiculous how long the episode expected us to not put together that Bebo's mother. Like, the moment that you saw this massive thing, like, of course it's going to have some connection to Bebo. And the fact that Bebo is, like, constantly moving kind of suggests that it's maybe a, a small child. Yeah, just, yeah. You. Stay. I. Go. And Kaz wanted to replace Bebo, but instead gave Nico a good meal, which is, you know, it, it cheers him up, so that's nice. And it is, I mean, it is kind of weird the way that we people actually, like, will look at, at some animals and be like, adorable, I want that as a pet, and then look at others and be like, that looks tasty, you know, it's just, like, and, and, like, you know, there are, there are people who have, you know, who really care about pigs, for example, and then a lot of other people who will eat, uh, you know, pork, so it's just, yeah, I appreciate that being pointed out. Episode 13, Dangerous Business. Kaz is improving as a mechanic, about time. I guess gay marriage is legal on the Colossus. Flicks an orc or beaker like an old married couple. I call the big one, bitey. The customer is shady, but not slim. Even James Bond villains wouldn't trust the death trap he uses to kill Kaz. Dude, shoot him. You have a blaster. He's got nowhere to run. You want him dead. The body won't be found. Like, just ridiculous. And another... First Order Connection, Sequel Trilogy Plot Tie-In. Which brings us to Episode 14, The Doze at Dilemma. It is genuinely sweet of Tora to invite Sinara to the tower, though it does, of course, mean she was almost kidnapped, especially because she gave the security code. And we see Sinara developing a conscience. And the First Order pretending to rescue Tora to manipulate Captain Doza. And that's again, you know, fascists will create a threat and then swoop in and rescue uh, people. You know, the, the Nazis did it with demonizing Jewish people and, you know, playing on the very real anti Semitism that was already there to really horrific consequences. Let's see. And, you know, the, the thing about, like, Tora inviting Sonara, it would have been a real jerk move to be, like, everyone except you is invited. You know, that was, yeah. And, and I think, she, you know, she does have a lot, like, no, I meant everyone. And that brings us to episode 15, the First Order Occupation. And the First Order are not letting anyone leave, so Sonara needs help getting off the Colossus. And the First Order tried to arrest one guy because he's slow to present his ID. So the Colossus is now a police state. And Tam insists the Stormtroopers are just doing their job. Sadly, a lot of people make excuses for fascism. There is way too much slapstick with Kaz in this episode. For some of it, he bumps into something and or gets his head hurt at least once per minute for several minutes in a row. And Sonara did come back to help Kaz. Very sweet. 
okay, I kind of smiled at Nico trying to prepare his head. Like, he, you know, I know someone who knows this station like the back of his hand. I'm, I'm not seeing it, Kaz. I'm looking at the corridor. I'm looking at my hand. I'm not seeing any similar. Just that was, yeah. And the First Order chase Niku and then BB. They seem very easy to distract. You know, I can't resist a good elevator music gag. And the pirates pick up Sonara, who is thinking about all the help she got from Kaz. Which is also, you know, that's a that's a good message that, you know, if you are, if you treat with humanity people that, you know, are in a bad situation, you know, yeah, that can, that can lead to good consequences. You know, <clears throat> in the season finale, Sonara and the other pirates actually helped save the Colossus. If they hadn't shown up, the, let's see, I guess likely, yeah, I think, yeah, they saved Kaz, certainly, and I think they might also help sa save some of the aces, so, yeah. Which brings us to episode 16, The New Trooper, and Captain Doza tries to talk the First Order people into unclenching, but to no avail. It is sweet that the older brother of the kids helps the younger fish. I, too many names, I, I don't remember. 515 questions them, wants to see their ID. They managed to knock him out. At first I thought they were going to like push him off into the into the water, but instead, like it seems like so much more of a hassle to get him into a an elevator or the the closet maybe but yeah oh yeah then then Kaz wouldn't have been able to to pose so yeah and at the table they have a discussion about the first order empire etc which was yeah the the you know that is a good yeah, it's important to discuss these things. They can make you disappear. Have you ever physically seen a copy of the holiday special? Exactly. Kaz posing as 515 is plot relevant and feels very Star Wars, so I'm here for it. And the people of the Colossus are publicly protesting because the police force are going too far, which could help normalize protesting. Very much approve. And we hear the backstory of the kids. Tam is being quite the centrist. 515 wakes up and seems legitimately confused. You know, despite Western media depicting being knocked out, being knocked unconscious as no big deal. Considering how much Tam talks about the First Order must have a reason. I really thought this would get into the brainwashing that... You know, where we learn that the sequel trilogy stormtroopers are exposed to, you know, Finn breaks against it, becomes a good guy. Something very hard to imagine happening in the original trilogy, but no, they don't get into that. And we learn why the First Order want the Colossus. See, if I were to rewrite, I would have had the First Order get to the Colossus much sooner in this season. And that brings us to episode 17, The Core Problem. Or or maybe instead of them getting to the Colossus, maybe episode after episode where Kaz leaves the Colossus temporarily, goes to a place with First Order troops, you know, so there's something, but yeah. Anyway, episode 17, Poe's leaving for Jakku soon, so we're nearing the start of The Force Awakens. Great tension in this episode, such as the gravity well, the exploration, and the TIE fighter confrontation. We're being watched. Poe, I hate to do this to you, but according to the ratings numbers, that is incorrect. Kaz trips way too many times in this episode. Where did you come from? I mean, just now, not biologically. Niku's adorable. Episode 18, The Disappeared. The increased presence of the First Order in the Colossus is leading to confrontations, especially gets bad when all races are cancelled, so the Colossus is serving as a microcosm for the Star Wars galaxies as we see the First Order increase its presence. 
Tam and Kaz discuss the First Order again. And the Stormtroopers claim, claim hype phase on left, which Tora knows can't be true. Right, I, I did not end up writing down, but I in the finale, I, I like that Aunt, Aunt Z gets to man a, a turret gun. Like, I 100% believe that Aunt Z knows what she's doing with that thing. Like, she seems like she has lived a life. I appreciate the misdirect. We thought that Kaz and Tora were in the box that the Stormtrooper asked to see opened, but I don't think the show needs more of Gorgs attacking people. Come on, Disney, have you not sold enough Gorg toys? And even Aunt Z is taken. And I love that we see that even hours later she refuses to stop resisting. Do not like the jokes about her being too heavy when she steps on hype, but at least they also do a joke where her size is just to take out Stormtroopers, showing it can be a positive. And I like when she entertains with anecdotes. Stormtroopers went to Yeagers, and Kaz and the rest are arrested, which is a great way to end the episode. You know, now we're really getting somewhere. Things are getting very serious. Episode 19, Descent. Which is decent. Niku really struggles to accept the idea that Kaz is a spy. Okay, first things first, I'm a craftsman. And the First Order Security Bureau agent is nice to Tam and it seems like it might work, which is some, you know, this is something the Allies did to capture Nazis and it did indeed work. Let's see, and, and, you know, um, fascists also do it to, you know, regular people sometimes to gain support, giving them something. I did like the bit with the Colossus being lowered into water, the swimming to the tower, outside of the box thinking, I just wish there was more. Like, it feels like too little for for one episode, too small also, you know, like, an episode of Rebels might have something like that, but it wouldn't be the only thing that would, yeah, happen in the episode. Episode 20, No Escape, Part 1. Very cool when Captain Doza fights the Stormtroopers. Too bad it didn't work out. And we see Tam manipulated with food and spin. I hope no more Stormtroopers show up. They are very difficult to deal with. Okay, fine, I get it. We're no longer in the original trilogy. And to make sure that we do indeed do every single classic slapstick gag, we have the guy check his drink, wondering if he's so drunk that he's hallucinating, then passing on another drink. We have the trying buttons until something works. Nico is so happy to be called buddy, and holds on to it, repeats it back. Very sweet. He's definitely my favorite character of this season. We learn about the hyperdrive. Very cool when the two Rollies fight each other. That was almost impressive, Kaz. Johnny, effing magic. Starkiller. That sounds like the worst thing imaginable. No, what sounds like the worst thing imaginable is somehow Palpatine returned. And we see the Hitler speech from another angle. Kaz lost his parents and his home in the Starkiller attack, which actually provides some context, which was sorely missing in The Force Awakens. I approve. And that brings us to the finale of the season no escape part two so yeah clever with the flushing out first order i have a cunning plan and the the now not now thing yeah i felt like that was pushing it a little too far I really like when Toradoza insults the stormtroopers because it's so, like, I'm not sure I've, I think this might be the first time in the entire season where she actually insults someone. Like, you know, Kaz, this nobody, comes and and supposedly claims to be the best pilot in the galaxy, and, you know, she's going to race against him, and she's not like, you know, no, she, she's... She, you know, all things considered, she's being very nice to him. But the Stormtroopers, she really does not like. So she, you know, 
and she fires off some Star Wars insults. Let's see. It's over, Kaz, even though you have the high ground. And the liftoff is nice and intense. And, you know, to be fair to her, Tamara has not seen very much reason to trust the Resistance. Very cool when the pirates come in to help. And I like the detail that Kaz at first is like, oh, not another pirate attack now, you know, because of course he would think that. That's, this is the first time they help. And... Yeah, very tense as they prepare to engage the hyperdrive, but they have to go a little higher up. And Niku has, and, and the others have no idea where they're going, which he finds exciting and the others find very frustrating. So, yeah, um, decent enough setup for the next season. I, yeah, that brings us to right so the yeah um there's 12 short films or webisodes or something i don't have anything to say about any specific of the shorts like they're fine they they accomplish what they set out to do i find the humor of the show to be much more palatable in the form of the shorts um, I, I did kind of like the Flix and Orca one because it is like you know, every so often they got to deal with someone trying to rob the place and the idea that they have, uh, you know, and that another guy shows up looking for his brother. Yeah. But yeah, so um, this is the first time that I do not think a... Uh, yeah. When when it comes to Clone Wars and Rebels, I feel like every new season was better than the ones before it. This, yeah, whether we're talking the overall season, the season opener, or the season finale, I would definitely say Resistance Season 1 is the my least favorite of all of these, and the only of these that I don't love. So, yeah. But, the, the, you know, I'm hoping that season two is, is better and is not, like, painful to watch or something. It's just, yeah. And, and, like, as soon as I'm done with Resistance, I'm starting Bad Batch, which I'm super excited for. So, yeah. You know, the, the, um, I really liked the couple of episodes with the Bad Batch in season seven of Clone Wars, so, and and I do 100% understand why after two seasons of Resistance, Disney went and made season seven of the Clone Wars because they were like, okay, we gotta we gotta fix this, people, we we gotta get people back on on our side of these animated Disney, yeah. But yeah, that is it for this video. I will be doing a couple more videos this week, so hope to catch you then. May the Force be with you.